In the years after the historic desegregation case, Clark's son, Alexander Jr., breaks the color barrier at the University of Iowa and graduates with a law degree in 1879. He later practices law in Oskaloosa, Iowa. In 1884, a second African-American gets his law degree from the University of Iowa. It is Alexander Clark Sr. At the age of nearly 60, he graduates eighth in his class out of 80. He then moves to Chicago, where he becomes the editor and owner of the Chicago Conservator newspaper. A conservator editorial published in 1886 calls on African Americans to read a newspaper published by an African American, saying it shows that we have the nerve and manhood to stand up and advocate through our own journals all privileges for our race that are enjoyed by white citizens of the country. Throughout this period, Clark continues to correspond with his longtime friend and associate, Frederick Douglass, the leading black abolitionist whose life, unlike Clark's, is still remembered and celebrated today. We have some scattered letters between them. We have some newspapers where uh, Douglass writes to Clark and the letter is published in a newspaper. Clark responds in a newspaper. Douglass responds to that. Interestingly, in the published letter to Clark from 1888, he says, we have been in the struggle for civil rights for 45 years. And then at the end, he says something about our 40-year friendship. So the implication is, is that Douglas has known Clark since the late 1840s. And Douglas is acknowledging that since the early 1840s, both of us have been involved in the civil rights struggle. That makes Clark significant. In 1890, Clark, by now in his mid-60s, is dispatched by President Benjamin Harrison to Africa to represent the United States as its ambassador to Liberia. Clark dies in Liberia in 1891. His body is returned to Iowa. He's buried in this Muscatine Cemetery overlooking the Mississippi.